What is up guys and welcome to another episode of Is It OP, the weekly series where we test out some of TF2's most stereotypically overpowered weapons and today we are going to be looking at the Beggar's Bazooka. Now in my mind the Beggar's Bazooka has always kind of been like my crazy Uncle Bill. It can be a lot of fun, great at parties, but sometimes you'll try and do something a bit too crazy and stuff just seems to go wrong. But, that's it, sometimes stuff goes right, and when that stuff does go right, there are very few weapons that can give you quite as cool a feeling as the Beggar's Bazooka when you jump at someone and spam rockets in their face, and that is why I have a huge, huge amount of fun using this weapon. Now, obviously, the thing that makes this gun so different from any other is the fact that it can load and shoot three rockets at the same time. And to counterbalance that, Valve have also made it so that those rockets don't shoot straight, but they've got kind of a certain angle area where they can fire off. So it's not exactly an accurate weapon like the normal rocket launcher. Now, because of the way this gun works, it kind of seems to work best in those really close quarters situations. Because if you try and shoot someone at any long range, your rockets are going to go everywhere and you'll be lucky to even get one rocket hitting the person or even hitting near the person. But when you're up close, you can release those three rockets point blank range, each one dealing about 100 damage, and it will seriously, seriously hurt. But at the same time, the problem is if you get too close, you're going to be blowing yourself up and create a lot of problems. Because of that, the way I really like to play this gun is kind of like an ambush style, right? So you try and sneak up behind people, load up three rockets, and then absolutely obliterate them in one shot. And the other cool thing is that this gun has actually got something built into it which really helps with that kind of ambush style of play. And that is the really unique kind of rocket jumping that goes along with it. Now, with most rocket launchers, you actually need a solid surface to rocket jump off, right? Like, you need to aim down, shoot a rocket off the ground, and then propel yourself up in the air. This gun doesn't work like that. With this gun, you can actually rocket jump off thin friggin' air, like you see me doing here, by overcharging your rockets. And that can be so, so useful, and actually save your life in not really, really common situations, but the situations where you use it are ones where you wouldn't otherwise survive if you didn't have this kind of weapon with you. Now, this could be kind of using the three rockets to awkwardly jump over people's heads, like you can see me do here. Uh, you can do it a lot better than that, but I kind of screwed up a little bit there. Or, in uh, what I thought was one of the really coolest moments I had this game, was when I actually get air blasted off the edge here, and I use the overcharged rockets to bounce myself back up on top of the cliff and save myself from death. This kind of rocket jumping, I think, is one of the most underutilized things when I see people using the Beggar's Bazooka, because it is so unique and it is so powerful, not only in little niche situations like that, but just jumping over people's heads and flanking them and getting behind where they can't even catch you. So if you're thinking of having a go at using this weapon, it takes a bit of practice, but I would really encourage you to try and learn how to do these kind of rocket jumps, because they are a crap load of fun and they are really, really strong, and probably one of the strongest and biggest advantages you can get from using this weapon. So we've had a great long chat about why I really like this weapon and why it can be really, really strong. That basically comes down to the fact that it can deal about 300 burst damage in a single hit. And also it has some of the most unique versatile rocket jumping stuff in the game. It gives it a major advantage in certain situations over the normal rocket jumper. Uh, like that failure there. <laughs> but uh, it's time we go on and we talk about some of the big disadvantages. And the two big disadvantages really come down to the high inaccuracy of the weapon and the fact that it can't really uh, suddenly shoot its three rockets. You have to kind of think ahead and load your three rockets before you can actually shoot them. And if you don't release the three rockets after you've loaded them, you will start dealing massive, massive damage to yourself. So, first up, the inaccuracy. When you're playing with this gun at a medium to close range, it's really not a factor you're going to notice. The gun isn't so inaccurate that you can't actually hit people, you know, when they're pretty close to you. It's still, it is accurate enough to work at that level. But as soon as you start trying to snipe a sentry gun from outside the sentry gun's range, that's when you're really going to start running into trouble. Now, this can be a major disadvantage, but you can almost completely eliminate that disadvantage if you play the weapon in a certain way, being trying to stick to kind of close range situations or medium range situations, and to try and avoid trying to snipe people from across the map with your rockets, because one, they're never going to hit, and two, you'll just be wasting ammo, which is already scarce enough with this weapon. So yeah, I don't see this inaccuracy as being too big an issue as long as you play the weapon properly and avoid those kind of long-range engagements. 
Now, the last big issue to talk about is the fact that you actually have to load these rockets. With the default rocket launcher, you can just click your mouse and it will immediately fire a rocket out. But the Beggar's Bazooka actually needs that rocket to be loaded into the chamber before it can be fired out. This means that if you're suddenly surprised by someone, there's going to be about a half second delay before you can fire even one rocket. And if you want to fire three, you're going to have to spend about two or three seconds actually loading them all in. That's why a lot of the time you have to kind of think ahead and go, okay, is there going to be an enemy around this corner? You have to load the three rockets in and you have to go around the corner and hope that that enemy that you thought was there actually is there. Otherwise, you're going to have to release the rockets anyway on thin air because if you continue you to load them you'll just blow yourself up and then you'll kind of look like crazy uncle bill and everyone will laugh at you and you'll feel bad and go and cry now this used to lead to a hell of a lot of ammo problems with this gun because you'd always have to be loading rockets into the chamber in kind of anticipation that you're going to run into someone because you didn't want to be caught you know by surprise with nothing loaded and then you just die so that used to lead to massive problems with this gun when you couldn't actually resupply from any dispensers because well that's just the way the gun was made. <laughs> so basically you'd have to go searching around the entire map trying to find uh, ammo packs a lot of the time which were taken by engineers to build dispensers which you couldn't even use. So I found that when I used to use this gun I would spend a huge amount of time either walking back to the resupply cabinet or just walking around the map holding my melee weapon unable to really shoot anything just waiting for ammo from somewhere trying to find a dead body. But after the most recent patch, they've actually made it so that you can refill your ammo off dispensers as long as the weapon isn't active. And really, making sure it's not an active weapon is a really, really easy thing to do. You just quickly pull out your melee weapon, refill your ammo, and then you're back and you're ready to go. So the ammo problem, which used to be massive with the Beggar's Bazooka, is basically completely gone. So, summing up, because I can't believe how long we've been talking about this gun already. For me, the Beggar's Bazooka is one of the most underappreciated uh, pub kind of guns you can use in this game at the moment. The stock rocket launcher is and will always be good, but for me, the Beggar's Bazooka is an unbelievably strong unlock, as long as you play it the way it's supposed to be played, which is in those kind of really flanking, kind of medium to short range situations. You've also got to try and avoid blowing yourself up. The jumping is really, really versatile. The burst damage is insane. You can take down a heavy in a single kind of release of your three rockets. And it is honestly one of the most interesting guns and one of the most underappreciated guns in the game at the moment. So yeah, basically that's it for me. I'm not really willing to say that it is, without a doubt, so much better than the stock rocket launcher because the accuracy of that launcher is really really important and there are a lot of things that it can do that the Beggar's Bazooka can't do but if you play this gun right it can be a really really good weapon especially when you consider the fact that ammo after that most recent buff they made to it is no longer really a problem that used to be its only real shortfall and that is now pretty much totally gone so yeah basically that's my take on the Beggar's Bazooka it is a really really strong gun and probably the best unlock for the soldier right now maybe other than the gunboats because that is a really really cool unlock so I'd love to know what you guys think. Do you think this weapon's OP? Do you think it's pretty underpowered? Do you think I've kind of made any wrong assumptions about it? Because I probably have somewhere. And finally, post what weapon you think we should try in the next episode of Is It OP in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one.